Hi there, this is Jacob Nash, and this is a review of Unit 6, Simple Harmonic Motion. This is the unit that's the least on the exam, but it's still good to know the different things. So what background information would you need to know? Well, there's Hooke's Law, the spring force equals negative spring constant times x, which is the distance. And for springs, right is positive. That's what's in red. The period of a spring is 2 pi times the square root of mass divided by spring constant. And the period of pendulum is 2 pi times the square root of L divided by G. You can, it, you can remember those and not mix them up if you remember, oh yeah, spring constant, that means spring, length, pendulum. But what is a period again? It's how long it takes to make its complete rotation. Like, um, from start to finish, like if it's a pendulum, let's see, do I have any kind of like, uh, well, here's some earbuds. Um, if you can see, no, you can't see, of course. Um, it's like, it goes, it goes up, it goes down. And then when it's back to this place, that's a whole period. And then for a spring, it's like compressed and it's like, hmm, once it's back there, that's a full period. Um, and then frequency, that is, that's measured in Hertz and that is one divided by the period. And then period is one divided by the frequency. And then the height of a pendulum, like what is the height that it changes is L divided by, or sorry, minus L times cosine of whatever angle that it's at. Um, and then there's also potential energy of a spring, um, which is one half times spring constant times displacement squared. All right, let's move on. All right. We don't need, this is not something made by me once again. So let's see, I'll just put this. All right. What is the speed for this thing? Well, it said it's maximum displacement. And at the max, maximum displacement, there's the most potential energy and the least kinetic energy. So the velocity is zero. So it's kinetic energy because of that. The amount of stretch is max. As you can see, and this would be its equilibrium position. Uh, potential energy is at its maximum too because of the X. So basically, just like how when we were learning in unit four, if you remember, how height and velocity change things, this is how, so basically spring constant up, that means, or not spring constant, sorry, displacement up or how far out it is or in it is from, basically how far away it is from the middle point or equilibrium point where I would stop, that makes, this go up and it makes this go down. However, if the velocity is, well, it also makes the velocity go down. If the velocity goes up, um, potential down, kinetic up, distance down. So basically the kinetic energy and velocity do the same thing as each other and this and this do the same thing as each other. Okay. And total energy conserved. So I'll just say con conserved or really constant. And then the force, hmm. Well, by Hooke's law, we know that that is this. So if the, if the distance increases, so would the force. So we can say max for that. And force equals mass times acceleration. So if the force was max, so would the acceleration be. And then, uh, oh gosh, this thing. That's the same for C. So same as A. Now for B, it's the opposite. We have the maximum speed. So I'll just say, Ma I'll just, uh, I guess I'll still say max, All right. maximum. So that means that's maximum. This is minimum. 
or really zero minimum total energy constant, not writing that out. And, the, and those are minimum because minimum distance. All right. Well, let's see which uh, what thing we're going to do. Um, let's skip down to number five here. What things affect the period of a pendulum? Well, what is the period of a pendulum? Two pi times the square root of L divided by G. So length and gravity affected. What's the period of a spring? Two pi times the square root of M over K. So mass and spring constant affected. All right, and then this, well this, I, I'm gonna go back to a question because this was short. So the whole thing is total mechanical energy. And let's see, at, um, this is for the, uh, well, R, um, R, uh, this is just, I guess, kind of like position or height, if it was for a pendulum. So which, which is, the red shows that it is minimum at the bottom for a pendulum or the middle for a spring. That's always potential energy. And kinetic energy is maximum at the middle where it's, and at the bottom, or it is at equilibrium position because it's going back and forth. All right. Uh, we will look at um, number two. Okay. All right. There's a there's a spring that's at rest without friction. A eight kg mass is moving towards it with a velocity of six meters per second. It collides with the spring. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see what we do here. And it compresses a distance of 0 0.3 meters. Okay. So let's see, what do we know? We know that it has a mass of eight kg. It has a velocity of six meters per second when it collides with it, right? or not when it collides with it, but just initially. And then the distance it compresses is 0 0.3 meters. All right. So, oh, this one's asking about work. Is the work, the magnitude of the work um, positive or negative? Why? Well, work is force times distance. And if you recall from the work unit, I said if work is, or sorry, if force is negative, then work is. Is force negative or positive? Well, let's see. Force is spring constant times X. We don't know the spring constant, I don't think. But that doesn't matter because um, we know the, dis the spring constant always is positive and the distance is positive, but since there's a negative here, force is negative. And if force is negative, then work is negative. So negative, just say negative because force is. Since X and K are positive. If uh, X was negative, then it would cancel out the other negative, so. What is the spring constant? Oh, well, we have to, the spring constant is the force, or sorry, the, the force, this is Hooke's law. So spring constant would have to be negative F over X. Oh, how do we find the force? Well, the force, we can use work 
work is force times distance. So force is work divided by distance. So that's what we would use. And we can make this a little bit simpler and make it like this. All right. Oh, but how the heck do we find work? Well, work equals change in energy, doesn't it? So this is part of the KFES, as I say. Remember, write what you know, write what you need to find, use the equations. That's probably what we should have done first before we tried to solve it. But so we have to figure out what the work is by the change in energy. So what do we start out with? We start out with kinetic energy. And then we end up with potential energy. So um, the potential energy is from the spring. So, well, actually what we can do is, well, no, no, we don't, we don't do that. We do change in energy and change in energy that would, that equals to the work that we're trying to find. And that is um, kinetic energy, the final kinetic energy minus initial. But there is no kinetic energy at the end because the velocity is zero. So it's actually only the uh, final. So that is one half M masses eight and the velocity six, or sorry, the, uh, the initial is not zero, the final is initial, or the final is zero. Uh, that's what I meant to say. And the work is negative. Remember, we already said that anyways. So that is negative 144 joules. That is the work. So now let's head over to here and plug that in. Negative, negative 144 times the distance, 0 0.3. Oh, wait, we have distance in X. Uh, wait a second. Um, I, uh, I definitely did something wrong here because those are the same thing. All right, let me see. Oh, yeah, we don't, Hooke's Law, we don't need to do Hooke's Law. Yeah, th that's not the only way to find it. Remember, we can also use potential energy. Okay. All right, let's try this again. We can't do that because, um, yeah, anyways. Wait. Yeah, that's not the way you do it. So we know that the kinetic energy, initial kinetic energy, which was negative 144 joules. Um, oh, I was, okay, never mind. This, that, that's the work. I missed that part for this one. Um, negative 144 joules. So sorry, I was getting mixed up because I was looking at this thing on my other computer and I was looking at the wrong thing. So let's try that again. The initial energy is kinetic, the final energy is potential. So the kinetic energy will equal the potential energy, which is one half kx squared. I'm trying to hurry this thing up, right? So the kinetic energy is this. So k, we're trying to find that, and then 0 0.3 squared, that's the distance. And when you solve for k, it is 32 100. And that's the end. What's the period? All right, it's a spring that is one half, or sorry, two pi over mk, square root of mk, m divided by k. And so two pi, and then we have the m, which is eight, right? 
divided by 3,200. When you uh, do that, you get approximately 0 0.314 seconds, period is in seconds. What is the maximum acceleration? Oh, let's see, well, what do we do? Well, force equals mass times acceleration. So A equals force divided by mass. And we can change force to this using Hooke's law. So we have 3,200. And then we have eight divided by mass, which is, no, sorry, that, that was mass. This is the distance. And when you do that, you get negative 120 meters per second squared. Negative 120 meters per second squared. And by the way, this thing down here is important. Um, but I already did that in unit four review. So, um, And things to know that I didn't explain um, that well at first was, um, Remember that you, if you were trying to find uh, K, you could use Hooke's law, but keep in mind there's other ways to do things. So you could use um, this as well. So there's, remember, there's more than one equations for things. You just have to figure out which one works. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.